Ferrari have had a disappointing season. The team's mistakes were plentiful and their reliability was poor. They went from having a potentially championship winning car to arguably the third fastest by the end of the season. And as a result, they've lost their team principal as well. So what can the team learn from this season to improve for next year? Let's have a look. My name's Andy and this is Behind the Drive. Leclerc is capable of winning a championship. This year was Leclerc's first opportunity to compete for a world championship. Since he moved to Ferrari in 2019, he's challenged for a few wins, but with the power unit challenges the team faced in 2020 and 2021, the team has been uncompetitive on the whole. The new aerodynamic regulations produced a chance for Ferrari and Leclerc to get back to the top. The team had more aerodynamic testing time in 2021 based on their performance in 2020, and they maximised that opportunity to produce one of, if not the best car, at the beginning of the season. Leclerc was pivotal in this. He was the driver leading the charge for Ferrari, and his on-track battles with Verstappen through the first half of the season were awesome to watch. With Verstappen's early troubles, Leclerc was actually leading the championship for a significant chunk of the 2022 season, and for me, I think we've seen that Leclerc is definitely capable of winning a world championship. To do that though, I think two things need to change. Firstly, the worrying statistic associated with Leclerc's career is the fact that he's achieved 18 pole positions, but just five race wins. That pole conversion rate is just 28%, and there have been several factors that have contributed to this, including the fact that the Ferrari car was dominant over one lap this year, but struggled in the races with tyre wear. But fundamentally, Leclerc needs to start converting those pole positions into race wins. The other key thing that Leclerc will need to change is his management of the team. The Ferrari strategies this year were nothing short of abysmal, and that is something that we'll absolutely be talking about more later in this video. But Leclerc's ability to look around him in the race from a tactical perspective is somewhat lacking compared to his teammate. So often, Carlos Sainz called the team out on the radio to dictate the strategy based on what he had seen, and that's something that Leclerc failed to display on several occasions this year. I think this is a skill that he can develop, and he will need to if he wants to maintain a championship bid in the future. Leclerc's one key strength this year was his consistency. We've seen with Verstappen over the last few seasons that this is one of the most critical skills needed to become a world champion. The Dutchman has reduced his mistakes, and in 2021 in particular, he so rarely made unforced errors. When you're close in a championship fight, you have to avoid these types of mistakes, and I think Leclerc did well this year to avoid them with the exception of his error in France. On the whole, it was more the team that let Leclerc down than the other way round. So for me, I think Leclerc has shown enough this year that he is capable of winning a world championship. I think he's definitely capable of developing the skills needed to support the team in their strategy decisions, and with a new boss at the helm, that could change in the future as well. So it's a green box for Charles Leclerc. The Ferrari concept was difficult to develop. The Ferrari car was the best at the beginning of the season. Their concept was significantly different to the Red Bull and they were particularly fast over a single lap. I even made a video talking about the fact that the Ferrari was the best car this season, a video that still gets regular comments telling me how wrong I was. But at the time, the car was very fast, though with new regulations comes a development race. Not only does your concept need to be fast out of the box, but it also must be something that the teams can develop and make changes to and progress. Early on in the new aero regulations, the potential development gains are significant, and it was Red Bull and Mercedes that firmly won those races this year. Ferrari, on the other hand, struggled to bring developments in the season. In November, Bonotto revealed the fact that the team had to stop developing their car earlier than planned due to budget constraints. To me, this says that they've made two mistakes. First, they didn't have a long-term plan for their car design at the beginning of the season, something that often teams try to build into their plans. In addition, they also made a mistake in terms of budget management. This year, the budget management was more challenging, with the state of global inflation meaning there was more pressure on the budget set for things such as freight and shipping costs. As a result, the development budgets for the teams will have been put under pressure. But for me, I think the Ferrari team clearly made mistakes compared to their rivals this season. It could have been the car's development path or it could have been the budget issues. But this year, I think there was a clear error on their part, so I think the development challenges deserve an amber box this season. The team principal conveyor belt rolls on. 
A key event for Ferrari after the end of this season is the fact that Mattia Bonotto, the Ferrari team principal, has moved on from his role after four seasons in the position. During this time, Bonotto has achieved some success. His time as the technical officer before he stepped into the team principal role was strong and he's clearly got a strong technical mind and developed some great cars during that time. Therefore, it was always a doubt moving him away from the technical position into the team management role, particularly considering his previous role wasn't even replaced. But at the end of this year, Ferrari's strongest since 2018, Bonotto's left its post. It's difficult to know whether it was a forced resignation or not, but fundamentally there's been a metaphorical conveyor belt of team bosses at Ferrari in the last few years. Unlike a sport like football, replacing the team principal in times of difficulty isn't common in Formula 1. You just have to look at someone like Christian Horner to see that you can have a long period of time without winning, but still maintain the role and be successful again. What this results in is leaders that are able to develop their own team culture and build for longer term success. A Ferrari with bosses that are able to stay just for a few seasons is more difficult to create that kind of environment. There's clearly a lot of pressure on these bosses to deliver the team's first world championship since 2008, and for me, I don't think that's the best environment to create for the team. In my opinion, while there were clearly challenges for Ferrari this year from a reliability and strategy perspective, there will also be some positives to take. The fact that they developed such a strong car is great, and the fact that they've got a strong driver pairing at the team was beneficial this year as well. It's impossible to be successful in Formula 1 overnight, and the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull have set the bar incredibly high for success in this sport. So the new team boss will need to get up to speed quickly to continue the team's positive trajectory and solve the problems that have been exposed in 2022. Overall then, I think removing Bonotto from the role is short-sighted. There are issues, and I would like to think he was working to solve them, and a new team principal is likely to make the situation worse before it gets better as they get up to speed in their new role. So for me, it's a red box for the team's loss of Mattia Bonotto. Reliability issues cost Ferrari. One of the key issues the team faced in 2022 was their reliability problems. Races such as Azerbaijan and Spain were particular low points as Leclerc retired from leading positions, but Sainz also retired in Azerbaijan and Austria. More often than not, these issues were related to the power units, and this has been exposed once again in Mexico as the high altitude circuit resulted in the team being forced to turn down their power units to a lower setting and as a result become the third fastest team that weekend. This year, the power unit regulations have been frozen until the new designs are developed for 2026. This means that the only updates Ferrari can bring to their engine are reliability-related parts, something that is clearly a requirement for the current power unit that the team have. Perhaps they'd taken advantage of the remaining time that they had to develop the power unit in terms of speed, and then they thought that they would focus on the reliability later, much like Renault have done. This will have likely been a requirement considering the team lost significant amounts of power in 2020, but as a result, the team had disappointing reliability this season, and that meant that their championship fight fell flat after a promising start in 2022. This was one of the key reasons for the team's failure this season, and I wonder if they'll be able to solve these challenges going into 2023 and beyond. If the team wants to challenge for championships between now and 2026, the team will need to solve these issues. So for me, it's a red box for the team's power unit performance this season. A strategic disaster show. The final element of the team's challenging 2022 season that I want to discuss in this video is a topic that I've touched on several times already. The team's strategic errors were clear and obvious throughout this season. The first of several mistakes from the team came at Monaco, particularly for Leclerc as his pole position would only be converted to fourth position at the end as he was on the wrong tyres at the wrong time and ended up with a two lap stint on the intermediates, losing significant amounts of time in the process. To add insult to injury, the team then double stacked, costing Leclerc even more time. Other strategic blunders include Silverstone, where Leclerc wasn't pitted towards the end, leaving him vulnerable at the end. And then he got hungry, where Leclerc was put onto the hard compound tyres which left him vulnerable to Verstappen. That weekend, the Ferrari team converted a second and third on the start line to fourth and sixth at the finish. A thoroughly disappointing performance. These were part of a much longer list of mistakes from the team throughout 2022, and it wasn't all that new. The team have been critiqued for their strategic errors for several years now. Fundamentally, the team haven't learned from their own mistakes in the past, and don't seem to be learning now either. It seems like the team makes significantly more mistakes than the others around them, and perhaps the changes at the top will help this, but time will have to tell on that one. For now though, of course it's got to be a red box for the team's strategic performances in 2022. 
So there's my five things Ferrari learned from the 2022 season. Let me know what I missed and make sure to watch my video on the five things Mercedes learned from this season next.